Welcome to Young of All Podcast. What's going on, ballers? Welcome to the Beyond the Ball Podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Jones, and man, we have another exciting guest, another dope episode, um, because I've been uh, following this young man. I've, I've been seeing what he's been doing uh, in the Twitter sphere. He, he's been having the, the tweeters go crazy. I, I've been seeing uh, the, 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 the sports Twitter chats and uh, uh, just seeing an a inkling of, of what you've been doing. Um, so uh, here we have today a, a very special guest. Uh, he, he goes by the name of Mr. Kobe Castillo. 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 Yeah, I see the role. The role. I don't have the yeah. role. My... Man, w- man, w- welcome. Welcome to the Beyond the Ball podcast. How you feeling, man? I'm feeling well. I got to step up my game on my introductions on my podcast. I love that. Welcome, ballers. I got to figure out a way to step up my introduction on my podcast. Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, I've been checking out the podcast, and I, I recently heard the one that, that – that you all did with Tim, man, I love, mm-hmm. I love the intro music that y'all got going and, and, and everything that, everything that's encompassed, but can you just share, like for people who this might be their first interaction with you, can you just share a little bit uh, of, about yourself? Like uh, what, 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 what's it called? Elevator introduction. Can you just do a little elevator pitch to let us know a little bit more about uh, some of the dope things that you're doing? Yeah, well, hello, everybody. Uh, Like you said, my name is Colby Castillo. Um, I'm born and raised in Hawaii, which has a huge part of of who I am and what I do. And one of the things I believe in is that we're born into a bubble of limitation. And I think this bubble, no matter where you're born, is a certain size, depending on where you're born, the people you're around, the experiences you go through, and the information you consume. So my purpose with everything from sports to the job, the podcast to the articles, is to pop that bubble of limitation. And how do you pop that bubble of limitation? Well, you do it through storytelling. And I think storytelling takes many different arts and many different forms. And that's through podcasting, through uh, articles. I mean, there's many different forms of that. So that's my personal mission. And everything is an extension of that. Like I said, sports is a job. We're a sports online digital media company where basically what we're trying to do is pop that bubble of limitations, but specifically within the sports industry. We want to help connect people to information, to opportunity, and to other people as well. And we do that through the podcast and through the articles. Man, yeah. That, I mean, that's pretty tight. I need to tighten up on, on mine. You got the <laughs> elevator pitch. You got it tied up and with nice bow and nice ribbon with the purpose and everything attached. Man, but Kobe, I, I want you to talk, man, just to the point of, because you say you, you're talking about focusing on popping the bubble of limitation. When did you realize... That, that you were caught in a bubble of limitation? It, well, I think growing up in Hawaii, I mean, that's the first place, right? Growing up 18 years there, growing up there. I mean, I had a good life. I had my, you know, I was probably middle class. My grandparents are from the Philippines. So I'm second generation. They came from the Philippines. And, and the funny story is that my grandpa, grandpa, my tata, I call him in the Filipino, um, he came to Hawaii and they take this test, this placement test, when they first come in, the immigrants. And he took it, and they told him he was supposed to be a firefighter or supposed to go to the military. Mm-hmm. And he didn't want to do that at all. That, that's not what he wanted to do. He didn't want to put out fires or join the military. He came to Hawaii, to the U.S., for a better life. And so he faked he couldn't speak English. He oh, could wow. understand English perfectly. He could speak English, but he faked he couldn't speak English. And so they told him, okay, you're not going to be a firefighter. You're not going to be uh, going to the military. So it led him down the path of working in construction. Mm. And the story from there goes, he only went to the eighth grade. He never finished education beyond that. And he went into carpentry school. He did the trade school. And eventually he ended up starting his own construction company, which we, you know, as, as for me, I never saw him a lot around growing up. But the fact that he wasn't around just spoke to the fact of the hard work but also because we were benefiting from his labor, right? We had a good life. We were well taken care of, things like that. So growing up in Hawaii, um, you live on an island. Mm -hmm. Hour and a half around the whole island. There's the same six malls you probably go to, the same beaches you go to. There's only a certain amount of opportunities there. And you realize when I started to travel and and my grandparents took me around the country um, and around the world, I realized there's so many things outside of Hawaii. 
so many different cultures, so many different opportunities. And that was the very first moment I said, hey, the world is bigger than the bubble that I live in. How do I expand my bubble? Mm. Mm. Man. So, and, and I mean, getting caught in a bubble and if your bubble is Hawaii, I'm sure that's a pretty that's a pretty bubble to be in. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's Hawaii, right? It's everybody, everybody wants to go there. Everybody dreams about going there and I mm-hmm. lived there my whole life and mm-hmm. I never saw it that way though. And that does go, that goes back into another point I like to talk about is perspective. Mm-hmm. It, it's the way you see things, right? One person might see sand another person might see gold. Another might, person might see a, a trash or a dump. Another person sees Paris. And I didn't see Hawaii that way. And that was perspective. And I see it now from a different perspective and it's beautiful. But then it also goes into my freshman year of college when I was planning to be a physical therapist. You know, I told everybody the big two questions they always ask you when you're about to graduate high school is where are you going to go to college and what do you plan to major in? Mm -hmm. And I always said physical therapist, right? I mean, I said, oh, I'm going to be a physical therapist. My family members would applaud it. Everybody would be like, wow, dude, you're like, you're going to be a Dr. Castillo. You're going to be making tons of money. And I realized my freshman year, those expectations that people had for me weren't my expectations. I was living a life where these goals that I had weren't the goals I wanted. And luckily I had great people in my life. And Eddie Walker, who was my advisor at the time, um, he was a huge sports fan. And he noticed I had this passion and this curiosity for sports and the sports business side of it. And he said, wait, let's hold off on on declaring a major. Let me put you in a few intro classes for sport management and let me tell, you know, see what you think. And he put me in that class. And from then on, I fell in love with the whole sports business side of it. And again, that goes again, the information you consume, the people you're around, he helped help expand my bubble. And and then I figured out, hey, now I want to work in the sports industry. Being a physical therapist was never truly actually my goal. Yeah. See, and see, and the, th- the thing I, the thing I can appreciate about your story, Kobe, is the fact that you just shared that the advisor was like, wait a minute, don't declare a major just yet because the advisor knew that you were coming in and knowing that you, you think this is something that you want to do, but at the same time, you, you haven't had as many experiences or haven't had as much exposure to really know and double down. And I think that's the part that's so big and so pivotal because I think it's, I think it's two parts because you have, you have passion, like raw passion, Mm -hmm. but then advisors and coaches. And I think as people, we have to understand that our words have power because I think sometimes people will put words on, on others and then just feel, okay, that's the end of it not realizing that those words that you actually place on somebody can end up, can end up shifting their trajectory. Oh yeah. And, and, and one of the biggest things is as human beings that I noticed for me personally is that the voices of others are a lot louder than the one that's inside of us. And I think that we're all trying to work towards being able to block, block the outside voices, but being aware that people do listen to the people's opinions. Um, mm-hmm. It goes into the power of like you were saying, I mean, we all individually have the power to influence somebody's life. And I think when we recognize that and when we appreciate and we honor this powerful gift that we all have, I think then we're, better, we're able to understand it. And I think we live our life in a better way. But also for me, it goes back into like you were saying, these coaches, these advisors, they have so many different experiences. I'm 22 years old. I can't tell a young sport professional or college student aspiring to work in the sports industry, you have to do it this way because I'm still going through the journey myself. So then it ties it into the, why the reason the sports is a job started is because I needed to tap into the experiences of people who are in the industry for 20 years, for 15 years, 10 years, five years, more years than I have and be able to let them share their experiences to help guide other people and all these different paths that they choose to go down towards. Mm, yeah. So, so can you talk a little, a little bit more about uh, sports as a job and how that came about and, 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 and why this is so big? Well, talk, talk a little bit about how that came about and then we'll go a little bit deeper. Yeah. So November of 2019, um, that's when it ultimately started. I, I followed this guy by the name of Gary V and I found, I, I just so happened to find his content around that time. And it was interesting because I was never really into that kind of thing, but I found his content And I can't remember what particular video, but he said something about documenting your journey. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, let me document my journey. Right. 
So I started a blog, horrible writer. I hate writing, but I started this blog and I got probably got three articles in and I was like, dude, I'm sick of this. I, I, I can't write. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing. So I was like, I love podcasts. Why don't I just start a podcast? And I started to look into it and, and I noticed that it's a lot easier than people think. So I started the podcast um, and the first three episodes were literally me talking about my story, what I just shared with you. And then I went into like my day to day life and I had five listeners. I, I, and I joke around, but it's probably true. It was probably my mom, my dad, my brother, my friend, and my girlfriend. Five yeah. people would probably listen to the podcast. But I got this DM on Instagram from a guy in, in Ireland. And I thought it was spam because I, I get these Instagram DMs. We all do. And, and sometimes it's spam. <laughs> and it starts off saying, hey, brother, I appreciate you um, sharing your story. And he goes on and saying, like, I've always wanted to work in the soccer industry, but I never really had the courage to do it. And I listened to your story. And I just want to tell you thank you because I just booked a, a ticket to fly to England to pursue this career working in the soccer industry. Wow. And from that moment on, I mean, if you, for you to get that kind of message, you understand, again, the power of our words, the power of our story. And I realized not just my story, but it's the story of every single person. It's the story of the person that sits next to you on the bus, the person that, that's in that classroom, the, the normal people that we normally don't hear from. Those are the stories that people need to hear because sometimes, like it goes back to the bubble thing. We're not aware of certain experiences, opportunities because of where we're born and, and how we come up. So to share that somebody works in sports broadcasting or works in social media or is a team manager, it makes people understand there are many different routes that you can go down towards and, and you can apply these lessons that they take from their experiences and apply it to your own life. So we, that started the podcast and then we branched off into three other podcasts and we do articles now telling stories. So we reach out to people to tell their story on articles, on podcasts, however we can get their story told, we find a way and we put it out there for people to consume. Yeah, man. I mean, that's beyond dope. So what is the end game goal for, for sports as, as a job? What, what, what's the end game goal for, for, for Kobe Castillo? <laughs> I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. It's, it's the end goal for me. Um, it's interesting because at one point I wanted to be an athletic director and I thought, you know, I wanted to be an athletic director because of the title, because of, of that's the pinnacle of college athletics. That's what I wanted to be in. Um, but then I realized the same time around November, 2019, that it's not necessarily the status or position that I was trying to reach. It was the, the fulfillment of reaching that purpose and that goal of popping the bubble of limitation. And that's where the birth of sports as a job came. And, and the goal for me is to really see sports as a job turn into a, a, a full-blown sports digital media company, eventually covering sports business news, and then also continuing doing what we're doing, kind of like a, a player tribune or a ESPN 30 for 30. But we put the celebrity spotlight on the people behind the scenes. And, you know, Again, it goes back to the mission, popping the bubble limitations. I don't know where life will take me. I don't know. Maybe one day I'll be doing something else. I'll be in certain industry, different things like that. But for me right now, the goal is to pop the bubble limitations and to do it through sports as a job. So that's, that's my main goal right now. Yeah, man. Uh, I mean, I think that's, I think that's awesome. Man. I never even thought about that because, yeah, Players Tribune. I mean, Players Tribune is, is huge, dude. Like, they're they're massive because I didn't even know and and you may or may not be familiar with the, the Knuckleheads podcast with, with Darius Miles and Quentin Richardson. They used to play for the Clippers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and they so they started their podcast and when they stream it or when they upload it, it's under the Players Tribune YouTube channel. So and just seeing all the stories they share, that's that, that, that needless to say, I was saying that just to say that's amazing. Um but but before we got before we got offline, I mean before we got online. Um, and, and me and you were talking a little bit about perspective, um, just because, you know, a, a, as we see certain states are starting to lift the ban and certain states are, are starting to rescind the lift of the ban uh, that mm -hmm. they had. Man, so how are you, stand, how are you uh, keeping your perspective uh, positive in, in, in this time, in this day and age? And, you know, what does that look like? Yeah, I think every day it starts off with feeling grateful. I think 
to understand that I'm in a better, better situation than a lot of people because of what's going on. It, it is unfortunate, right? There's a lot of people that are unfortunately losing their family members. They're sick. They're losing their jobs and different things like that. But I saw a post. I don't know who it was. They posted about how I think the last recession in 2008, 2008 gave birth to a lot of great companies um, mm -hmm. um, that we see today, right? The big time companies. And I looked at it because I'm working from home. I mean, I do have a lot more time on my hand and things like that. I saw it as an opportunity. There's people at home who needs certain positive stories. There's a lot of graduates going into the industry right now. I feel lost. There's social media. I mean, the uptake of social media is crazy increasing right now. Um, so I just see it as an opportunity. I, again, it goes back to the perspective like we're talking about, right? We're talking about perspective is choose to see it as an opportunity instead of letting it cripple you. And I think the first thing is always to wake up and think about what it is you're grateful for. Because when you think about what you're grateful for, it injects that energy for you to really push through the day and keeps you going, even though everything that's going on is super terrible right now. Yeah, man. Um, it's, it's, it's a very interesting time to say the least. And, and I, I remember seeing a, seeing a post similar to one, the one you're, you're, you're speaking about. Um, and then even seeing, I was listening to some podcast, uh, God, I can't remember what, what podcast it was, but basically the gentleman was talking about when, I'm not sure if he said the great plague or I can't remember what it was exactly, but ultimately he said that was when, um, Isaac Newton discovered gravity. Mm -hmm. And then he also said, this was a time when Shakespeare, um, wrote Hamlet. It was, a, it was a period similar to a depression, similar to a pandemic like now. So just, just thinking about that, but then also Kobe pairing it with a lot of people in this time might be trying to do too much. Like, what would you say to that person? Because at, we're hearing from everywhere, you need to be starting a business. We're hearing from everywhere, you need to be doubling down on your goals. So what would you say to that person uh, who's, you know, who's not sure if they need to be starting a business or if they need to be going all in doing something else. What, what would you say to that person? I think, I think it, it goes into judgment. I think it goes into like, for example, I think a lot of times our the judgment we place on ourselves um, is it's critical because we're like, Oh, if I do this and it fails, or if I do this and it doesn't work out, then I suck. Well, why not just give it a try? I mean, we have the time to do things. Like, for example, and, and I said it before, like, I don't know if sports as a job is going to turn out the way I want it to. I mean, I'm doubling down. I started it before this whole thing has happened, but I'm doubling down even more so now just because the opportunity there. But if you put, it's, it's, I feel like even like it goes back into being a former student athlete. Like if you put in everything possible and you give it your all and it doesn't turn out the way you want it to, the outcome of it, at least you can be proud of what you've done. And if it does fail, you take away the, the, the skills and the experience and the knowledge you have from trying to do something. And you can use that to, to get a new job, to start something new or, or go a different, a different route. So I think just try it. Just try it and try not to judge yourself so hard about maybe what ifs or, or what it's going to look like. If it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. It's just get your, yourself back up and try it again. And I mean, that's, that's all I have to say. And I think... That that's that's at the end of the day, that's all we can do, right? We can just give it our give it our all. If it wins and we create a multi-million dollar business, great. Or if on the other side we end up just getting uh or identifying a way to where we can now incorporate something like cooking for more self-care, then you still you still win. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm but I'm glad you brought up the fact that you being a student athlete, because I'm not sure of how long ago it was, but I remember you putting up a post, I think when you were like in the hospital mm. and, 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 and just, just having that level of transparency talk, just talk a little bit about why you're so transparent. And then, and also talk about, share with us what, what sport you played. Cause I remember like you, you had like, <laughs> I'm not sure if it was your hand or your foot, but something was broken. But, but talk about that a little bit. Every, everything was broken. <laughs> everything on my body. So I'm a, I'm a former division two student athlete. Um, at the University of Minnesota Crooks and I played football. Um, I was very injury. I, I, I attribute to the, the fact that I probably, my parents are about 5'6", five, 5'7". Five, I'm about 6'2". 
Um, in my playing days, I was about 300 pounds. So it was total opposite of, of what I was supposed to be like. I mean, my bones were not meant for this body, but that hospital picture I showed you um, for the video, you can see right here, my pinky, um, the scar right there, right up of here. I, my pinky doesn't work. So it's it stuck like this. Oh, wow. um, my tendon ripped off my, what was it? Sophomore year of college football. And I played like this. I played, my hand was like this and I'm an offensive lineman. I got a block like this, right? Wow. So I was jamming my finger every single play. And probably four games into the season, I, I got hit from behind and I fell and I ended up breaking the wrist on this side as well. And so I put a screw in there. So sophomore year, I did my pinky. Junior year, I, I broke my wrist, put a screw in it. My senior year of high school, I tore my labrum. I had shoulder surgery. I also tore my meniscus leading up to that season. So I had knee surgery as well. And I came back in two weeks to rush it because it was my senior season. My freshman year of college, I re-injured my knee. So I went through, and that's probably why I am how I am. I think the reason why I look at this as an opportunity is because I've been torn down. I've been torn down back to square one and having to build myself up so many times. When you go from being able to squat 500 pounds to barely be able to squat uh, the bar mm. and having to restart all over again several times, not being able to bench press with the barbell anymore and having to figure out ways to, to mm. still get your strength up and, and be ready for the season, it, it's built that the skills, but also the mental capability in me um, to be able to build myself back up when in times like this. And, I, and, and my last guest on my podcast was a pro volleyball player. Um, one of the, 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 the most important things she said when it comes to injuries as an athlete, it's not more so the physical side that affects us. It's the mental thing that you go through. I was mentally exhausted every time I went through an injury. The, the physical part was all right. I could, do the, I could do the rehab and do everything like that, but it was the mental part. I really had to get into, um, I had to work it. I had to, like, just like how you work out your body, I had to work my mental side. I had to think about how am I going to be positive today and really keep myself towards that path of, of building myself back up. But the reason why I'm so transparent, again, it goes back again into the personal mission, popping the bubble limitation. It's by me sharing my story, my experiences, what I go through, hopefully somebody out there can relate to it. Hopefully somebody could take away what I learned and make sure they don't get into the same situation I get into, because ultimately that's what it is. I mean, we're, we're, we're all here for each other at the end of the day. I truly believe that. And, and the way we're able to help people is share our story and be super transparent about it. When did storytelling become, become so big for you? Um, because it, it seems like storytelling is, 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 is a big piece of, you know, everything behind your personal mission. And I, I even know it's a, it's a piece behind uh, sports as a job because listening to the podcast and you get to, you know, know the, the different guests by, by way of them sharing, you know, their mm -hmm. stories and stuff like that. So did, you know, so when, when did this become so big? Was it as you identified the bubble or just talk a little bit about that? Um, I've always been different because I've always been in touch with my feelings. And I, I think that goes into being a man, uh, you know, being a man is we're not supposed to be in touch with our feelings. Right. I think a lot of people say that um, is that we're not supposed to be in touch with with we're not supposed to feel certain ways, but in the eighth, seventh grade, I, I had a teacher who introduced me to slam poetry, uh, which is a, a form of poetry. And the one good thing I loved about poetry, slam poetry specifically, is that you didn't have to rhyme. There was no rhyming scheme. There was no structure to it. It was just building metaphors and you telling a story through your words. So from the seventh grade, I was huge into slam poetry. A lot of it was just to helped me get a girlfriend at the, t at the time, right? I mean, we're supposed to build these poems. And, but I, I, there was a lot of things I went through. I lost my grandpa um, from cancer at an early age, and that affected me because he was huge. So for me, storytelling, it started with slam poetry. And then again, it, it goes into different art forms. And I just naturally, along the way, I found these different art forms to help me tell stories. Mm. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Man, I've been a big fan of poetry. Uh, j just, just like you probably, I don't know, like I have a little notebook somewhere and I have like a band sticker on it. And I used to just write little poems, just little random poems. It's, it's very therapeutic. 
Like mm-hmm. it's it's very very therapeutic. Except when for me it didn't rhyme. That's when I got a little upset. <laughs> um, but man, uh, other than that, yeah, man. So slam slam poetry. So do you still you still do poetry now or? Ah uh, no, actually it's funny. I I I talked about it probably a couple of weeks ago. I I have the same thing. I have a notebook back at home in Hawaii that's probably filled with poems. The last poem I wrote was um, actually for my current girlfriend. Um, she got pissed off at me. So I wrote this poem for, her. again, it goes back to, to writing poems for, for girlfriends and for a girlfriend. Um, but no, I, 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 try, I don't write anymore because, again, I found this different art of storytelling. So I could hop on Twitter, you know, be transparent about something I'm going through, hop on a podcast, talk about it um, in an episode. So now I, I found different forms. I, I kind of do want to get back into it because I, I still like that free art form, that free storytelling form. And I, I, hopefully I get back into it. Hopefully. Yeah. 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 So what, so what do you do that's like therapeutic or or self-care? Like, what does that look like for you? For me, it's physical. For me, it's physical. It's working out because I think throughout the day, I'm like, I I have meetings. I have my full-time job. I have sports as a job. So I'm constantly on phone calls, constantly trying to, you know, talking to people through text, making sure we're doing certain things, putting out content. So for an hour and a half or two hours of my day, I'm able to go right now, obviously since the pandemic, I, I turned my garage, I have one 30 pound dumbbell. I go into my, my, my garage, I put my AirPods in, play some sort of podcast. And for me, I clear my mind. I, I don't think of anything. I did absolutely nothing except working out. And for me, that's kind of my self care. Cause like, like, and one of the interesting things somebody said to me is, is treat ourselves like a computer, like a computer has to reboot certain mm-hmm. times. If you don't reboot it, I mean, it's not going to work properly. So for me daily getting that hour and a half to two hours workout workout in is my rebooting and my self care. Gotcha. Dope, 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 man. Yeah, man. This, this has been good just to get to know the man behind the, the mention. I guess we can say the <laughs> man behind the handle. But uh, so so there's this fun there's this fun segment I like to do on on the show. I like to call it I like to call it the two minute drill, Kobe. The two minute drill. Okay. And in the two minute drill, I'm just gonna ask you some rapid fire questions. It's one, two, three, four, six, six, six rapid fire questions, and then you just answer. You know, rapid fire. So pew 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 pew. pew, <laughs> pew. Here we go. Are you ready? I'm ready, man. We, 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 in football, we practice the two minute drill more, more than we actually, actually have to do it. So I'm yeah. ready for the two minute drill. Yeah. I, I played football for this long and yeah, man, <laughs> it's, it's crazy that, that, that is so much of a thing, but you never know when you need it. So here we go. Favorite food. Uh, spaghetti. Mm, what kind of like just by itself? No, uh, I make the spaghetti with, uh, red bell peppers um italian sausage mushrooms onions and then i mix it with any type of sauce oh nice book you're currently reading it is the brands win championships by jeremy darlow Mm, okay uh quarantine netflix show of preference the kingdom it's it's a viking show um i don't know if you watch game of thrones but i put out a controversial tweet yesterday i said it is better than game of thrones Ooh, okay all-time favorite movie Oh, it's Blindside, Offensive Lineman Root. So uh, I love that movie. He did, you know, Michael Orr was, I mean, everybody wanted to be Michael Orr. I didn't wear number seventy-four, but if I could, I would have worn. I would have worn number seventy-four. Mm, favorite quote. Favorite quote. Ooh. Don't let it happen. Make it happen. Oh, that's good. And then one tip that you would want to give to a current student athlete. Understand that sports is part of who you are, but it, it, it's not entirely who you are. Because again, it goes into the, the transition period. Is It's going to be a difficult one. I mean, you, you've been playing sports your whole life, but understand that your skills that you learn from being an athlete, but also your interests outside of sports, that's truly who you are. And, and just realize that when sports is gone, your identity is not gone. Boom, there it is. There we go. There we, did, you, <laughs> did you actually know that Michael Orr came back after the blind side and he said, I believe he said that he wasn't the biggest fan of how he was portrayed in the movie. Really? Was it, I mean, it was, it, 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 they made him seem not as smart as yeah. he actually is. So I could see yeah. it that way. I've actually never heard that, but like they really didn't make him seem smart at all, which yeah, that, that, that's heard him, 
he's an intelligent guy. I mean, he speaks well. He he has an education, and and if you listen to him, I mean, you can tell he's he's an intelligent guy. So I I could definitely see like, and it's movie, right? It's Hollywood. Yeah, it, they yeah. gotta they gotta do some way, but I could definitely see that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely, definitely. Man, well, uh, Kobe, man, I, I definitely appreciate our time together today. Is there anything else you want to leave with the people? Is there a final parting word um, that you want to leave with them? But first, I want you to let them know where they can find you and uh, also how they can connect with you. Yeah, definitely. I'm on all social media platforms. Um, thank, thank you to shout out to Tim, Timothy Bryson for to letting me know I got to get my personal brand right. I switched all my my accounts to K O L B Y underscore Castillo. And then you can follow uh, sports as a job on all social media accounts. Again, sports as a job, visit us at www.sportsasjob.com and you'll find the stories of many different people in the industry. Um, I think you'll see it puts the spotlight, what actually goes on in the sports industry. And I just want to make sure people understand that sports isn't just coaches and just the players. There's a whole operation behind that. And there's some amazing people, amazing stories that need to be heard. So definitely visit that. And I guess one last thing I, I guess I want to say is, you know, for the people graduating right now, I, I think a lot of people are lost. And the two things I want to say is persistence and patience. Hmm. Keep pushing forward. Keep doing what you can to better yourself. But also realize that many things and many opportunities may not pop up right now. So remain patient, remain positive, and understand when the time is right, the opportunity will come along when you are ready. There we go. And there it is. Everybody, I'm going to have his information down in the show notes. Uh, be sure to be, be sure to follow Kobe and also be sure to check out the, the, the Sports as a Job podcast. Rate, review, and share because they're, they're interviewing some amazing people and they're putting out some amazing content. And then also the 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 twitter chats that you all have every is it every tuesday or are y'all taking thursday, uh, every thursday every thursday mm -hmm. every thir every thursday yeah the twitter chats um just as he's talking about they're creating a sense of community um and you get to meet the other people who aren't always the coaches aren't always the athletes but you get to meet all the other people who are a part of this community in sports so Everybody, thank you. Ballers, thank you for hanging out with us today. Be sure to, to leave your review on the Beyond the Ball podcast and then follow us on Instagram at Go Beyond the Ball. Kobe, thank you, sir, for coming on the show. And we look forward to sharing your story with the ballers. I appreciate it. Thank you for giving me the platform to share my story and what everything else is going on. Mm -hmm.